In this video, we will be comparing the Pocket 4K to the Arri Alexa EV. Can a $1200 cinema camera compare to the mighty Arri Alexa? Now just a disclaimer, I will only be talking about the things that are important to me, so if I miss something you would like to know, just hit me up in the comments below. Now if you've watched a movie in the past decade, chances are you have seen a movie shot with an Arri Alexa. It's a no-brainer that the sensor in the Alexa is the gold standard in digital cinema. So with that being said, the first thing we're gonna be looking at is image quality. Pretty much which camera has that film look. But remember, that film look is very subjective, meaning your definition of film look might not be the same as my definition of film look. It's also worth noting that majority of the Pocket 4K footage I shot was Cinema DNG instead of Blackmagic RAW. In my opinion, Cinema DNG Lossless is far superior than Blackmagic RAW. You can get Cinema DNG back by downgrading your Pocket 4K to firmware 6.1. But if you have the newer version of the Pocket 4K cameras, you will not be able to downgrade, unfortunately. Now the Pocket 4K has a 4 3rd sensor that can shoot up to DCI 4K in RAW, while the Arri Alexa Classic has a Super 35 sensor that can shoot up to 2.8K RAW with an external recorder. Without an external recorder, the Alexa Classic can only shoot 2K in ProRes and DNX HD. Now originally I thought the Pocket 4K was going to destroy the Arri Alexa in resolution since the Pocket 4K can shoot 4K natively. but after doing some testing, I found that an up-pressed 2.8K Arri Alexa actually beats the Pocket 4K when the Pocket 4K is shooting Blackmagic RAW. And the up-pressed 2.8K Arri Alexa ties the Pocket 4K in resolution when the Pocket 4K is shooting Cinema DNG lossless. Now, I'm not an expert, but I think the Arri Alexa did really well because the Alexa sensor is really good. Even 10 years old, it's still pretty amazing. Also, I'm not really one of those people that cares about sensor sizes too much. I mean, I've been shooting Blackmagic cameras since 2013, so I'm used to small sensors. But this case here, I honestly believe the Arri Alexa matched the Pocket 4K in 4K resolution due to its sensor and sensor size. Next up is probably the biggest question I had prior to my test. Can the Pocket 4K beat the Arri Alexa in color science? If not, can the Pocket 4K at least match the Arri Alexa? First, we will take a look at Blackmagic Design's extended Rec. 709 against the Arri standard Rec. 709. I prefer using the Blackmagic Design's extended Rec. 709 instead of the standard Rec. 709 because, in my opinion, it just looks much better than the standard Rec. 709. But that's just me. Now it's very clear that even though BMD's extended Rec. 709 look alright, it's just no match to Aries Rec. 709. Additionally, there's a lot and tons of LUTs out there you can get to make the Pocket 4K look like the Aries Alexa. I, for one, decided to use one Milaris Pocket 4K to Airy Alexa power grade. Now, I'm not a colorist at all, so I was not able to match the two cameras perfectly when using the power grade. But I think if one was to spend time tweaking, color correcting, and even doing some secondaries, one Milaris power grade can get you pretty darn close to the Airy Alexa look. Now, with that being said, as far as color science goes, I'm gonna have to give it to the Arri Alexa, just because it looks freaking amazing. It's insane how easy it is to get great, amazing shots with the Arri Alexa. Additionally, the Arri Alexa renders crazy, amazing skin tones straight out of the box. But if you're a really good colorist with time, I can almost guarantee you that you can get some really good colors out of the Pocket 4K as well. Now, up next is low light. Okay, I understand cinema cameras need light to function properly, and I've had the Pocket 4K for almost two years now, so I know what it can do in low light conditions. However, I wanna see how noisy the Arri Alexa can get at its maximum ISO of 3200. Now the Pocket 4K is the clear winner here since it has dual native ISO 400 and 3200. And in my opinion, you can get a usable image out of the Pocket 4K even at ISO 5000 if you don't mind the noise. On the other hand, the Arri Alexa's maximum ISO is 3200. 
A 3200, I honestly think the Aria Alexa is still usable. The noise looks pretty organic. It has that film noise to it and not gain look. When it comes to seeing in the darkness, the Pocket 4K wins. Now the next category is range of dynamic. On paper, the Pocket 4K has 13 stops of dynamic range, while the Aria Alexa has 14 stops of DR. It took me a couple of tests to really determine who's got more. Granted, my tests are not scientific whatsoever, so please keep that in mind. Now, shooting 400 ISO on the Pocket 4K, which is the native ISO, and 800 with the Aria Alexa, which is the native ISO, then overexposing it four stops, the Aria Alexa wins in recovering highlights. However, shooting both cameras at ISO 800 then overexposing it four stops, I can see that the Pocket 4K recovered a little bit more highlights than the Ari Alexa. But again, keep in mind, I shot Cinema DNG, not B-RAW, and I am using one Milaris power grade and not the standard Rec. 709. Now, with underexposure at four stops under, the Pocket 4K, in my opinion, starts to struggle a little bit. It's also worth mentioning that the Ari Alexa shadows are thick. Thick. It's kind of hard to explain, but the Alexa controls darkness a lot more. There's a lot more detail there. So dynamic range is kind of complicated here. The high range I'm going to have to give to the Pocket 4K and the shadow and darkness I'm going to have to give to the Aria Alexa. Now slow motion is our next topic. The Pocket 4K can shoot up to 60 frames per second at 4K DCI, which is crazy. While the Aria Alexa can shoot ProRes 60 frames per second HD. You can also shoot up to 120 frames per second in an Alexa if you purchase the high-speed license, or if you're lucky, the high-speed license is probably already in your camera that you bought. You can also record raw 60 frames per second with an Odyssey 7Q external recorder, but you will need two different SSDs, two different cables to make this work. It's a pain in the butt to record raw with the Aria Alexa using an external recorder. Now, additionally, you will need a software from Convergent Design to help you combine the files together in post, which is a butt pain because that software is actually not working with me right now. It's called Clip Merger. It's not working in my Windows machine, so I can't show you any slow-mo and raw, unfortunately. So shooting slow-mo in the Aria Alexa is a lot more tedious than the Pocket 4K. What I'm going to talk about now is price. I actually don't know the original price of the Aria Alexa Classic when it first came out 10 years ago. I'm actually afraid to find out. But what we're gonna look at is the lowest price Alexa Classic on eBay, which is going for $5,500 with 5,000 hours in it. On the other hand, a brand new Pocket 4K is $1,300 and it comes with the Venture Resolve. That being said, what else do you need to get for the Aria Alexa for it to work? The $5,500 Alexa Classic listed on eBay right now only comes with the body, EVF viewfinder, V-mount plate, cables, and a handle. So that's it. So we'll need power. The body in the EVF draws 85 watts of power, so you'll have to buy batteries that has at least 90 watts, but then again, that's still kind of close. Audio. The Aria Alexa Classic does not have built-in microphone. So you're gonna have to get some type of audio recording device like a sound mixer or a lavalier or a shotgun mic. Tripod, the Aria Alexa Classic weighs 13.9 pounds, body only. So you're definitely gonna need a new tripod and a tripod head. Media, without an external recorder, the Alexa uses Sony SXS cards, jeez, which are fairly cheap nowadays. So all in all, that $5,500,000 turns into a lot more than just $5,500,000. So the verdict. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and the Aria Alexa are both cinema cameras. But which cinema camera is best for you? I get that, I get asked that a lot. Now there's obviously a lot more variables that I did not cover in this video, but I'm gonna try to break this down like this. Let's say you're just starting out and you managed to get $8,000 to start your filmmaking journey. In that case, buy the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K or even the Pocket 6K, which is what I'll be comparing the Alexa to next, by the way. Spend the remaining cash on audio lights, 
and maybe some online classes on cinematography and color correction. You can spend a lot more money and get a lot more things when, if you get the Pocket 4K. On the other hand, if you're someone who has audio, lighting, tripod, everything, and don't need run and gun and have cash to spend, at $8,000, the Area Alexa Classic still hold its value as of May 2020, in my opinion. You can still get amazing images out of the Classic. Heck, if it's good enough for Roger Deakins when he shot in Time and Skyfall, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be good enough for you and me. So I hope you guys didn't learn anything today. Uh, make sure to check out the comments below to find some downloadable files for you guys to mess around with. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I will see you guys next time.